Coming up, a baby hippo who doesn't like the water at all. A Japanese racehorse famous for losing wins the hearts of her fans. One bad decision threatens the lives of thousands of crocs. India's elephant owners are furious over costly new government bans. And a mini baby boom is good news for China's Siberian tigers. An animal shelter in the foothills of the Alps in southern Germany received dozens of calls about a four-eared cat named Lily after local media published pictures of the unusual feline. Tessie Lerdemann, who heads the shelter, said Lily will first be neutered and kept under observation for another two weeks. Lerdemann was eager to point out that the black and white cat with the extra set of ears wasn't a freak, but rather an energetic, loving and well-adjusted kitten. A second pair of slightly smaller non-hearing ears sit just behind a regular pair of ears. Vets have attributed the phenomenon to a gene malfunction, although her hearing is completely normal. Lily was named after Lilith, a mythical fairy, because of her four enchanting ears. She was given to the shelter last week because the family who owned her had more cats than they could care for. The six-month-old now has numerous cat fans around the world eager to adopt her or at least make donations to the shelter for her continued care. Lily is a normal cat and will be adopted out like other cats at the shelter. However, Lerdemann is determined to ensure that she goes to a good home and not to someone who might turn her into a freak show exhibit. Only once the shelter has checked out the suitability of the applicants and their home environments will a final decision be made. A year ago, she was just another two-bit loser, headed for a bitter end. Now, thanks to a soft-hearted trainer and a media blitz, Haru Arara, a Japanese racehorse who can't win for trying, is a national icon. The skittish chestnut mare, who's lost 105 races in a row, is set to star in a movie and is guaranteed a cushy retirement instead of a one-way trip to the glue factory. But many fans bet on Haru Arara losing rather than winning. Her tickets, more often than not, become good luck charms, as does the merchandise like T-shirts, CDs and calendars which have begun selling like hotcakes. In Japanese, does not win is pronounced ataranai, which also means to have warded off something, usually bad luck, diseases or accidents. After a local paper wrote that Haru Arara's 100th loss was in sight, national media seized on the saga, depicting the horse as a symbol of the Japanese people's never-give-up attitude. Kochi Racecourse has inadvertently benefited from the horse's monumental losing streak too. Before this lucky loser came along, they stayed away in droves, but now people attend in their thousands, hoping to catch a glimpse of this Japanese icon. The horse is treated so well that she's pampered more than the champion racehorses, whose only view she usually sees is of their tails as they pass her on the track. For 53-year-old former jockey, now trainer, Dai Muneshi, however, Haru Arara's popularity has already achieved the most important goal. 
saving her life. She's a living thing, and to destroy her at the mere whim of humans is absolutely inexcusable, says Maneshi. And quite rightly so. He receives letters every day saying how much people love the horse and how much they want to see her lose again. By race day, Haruarara, which means glorious spring in Japanese, had so many people betting on her that she was favoured to win. She started in the middle of the pack but quickly fell apart yet again, only just managing to come second last, although nobody seemed to mind in the slightest. Thousands of Paraguayan Yakari crocodiles are under threat because of a decision made years ago to divert a river bordering Argentina and Paraguay. In 1990, both countries decided to open canals in the Pilcomayo River to divide its waters equally. In the western region of Paraguay, known as the Chaco, numerous lagoons are drying up because the water level in the river, which feeds into them, is dangerously low. The low water levels have forced thousands of Yakari crocodiles to search for water and food in the center of the lagoons, where the animals bury themselves in the mud. Those that are too weak from lack of food are trapped. Local natives and farmers have begun culling the largest and weakest crocs to provide meat for younger and stronger yakaris who have a better chance of survival. At the same time, they're easing the congestion of crocodiles in the lagoons. The government has approved the controlled hunting of 2,500 crocodiles. Opportunistic vultures patiently wait to devour the few morsels that the starving crocs leave behind, while the local farmers remove the skins, which are salted and dried in the sun. They plan to sell the Yakari's skins and use some of the profits to build a sanctuary where the surviving crocodiles can live. Yakari's can measure up to 2.5 meters in length and weigh up to 150 kilos as adults. And because guns are prohibited, locals are forced to enter the water barefoot while using walking sticks to feel for the crocodiles. According to the Paraguayan Environment Secretary, the decision to adopt a controlled hunting program to cull 25% of the Yakaris in order to save 75% of them was difficult to make, but the most responsible choice in the long run. It's hoped that the construction of the sanctuary can begin within the next 12 months. And still on reptiles, 840,000 marine turtles have emerged from the Pacific Ocean surf to lay eggs under the sand, following a centuries-old instinct in Mexico's southern Oaxaca state. There's even a theory that suggests the turtles come to give birth on the beach where they themselves were born. Each turtle lays about 100 eggs in deep nests that can take as long as an hour to locate and dig. The eggs then take around one and a half months to hatch. The turtles swim thousands of miles to arrive at La Escobilla Beach, coming from as far away as Guatemala and Ecuador, according to satellite data provided by the Mexican Turtle Center. The center is dedicated to educating the public about the ancient amphibians and the many environmental threats they face. They also head one of the largest marine turtle protection projects on the continent. Once the turtles are born, Turtle Center staff keep them safe from landbound perils and release them into the sea. But from then on, they're on their own. A decade ago, the Mexican government declared the turtles a protected species. But the new laws haven't put off determined poachers who are drawn to the hunt by the high prices fetched for turtles and their eggs on the black market. 
La Escabilla is now guarded by Mexican naval officers who patrol the beach together with staff from the Turtle Center. But even the tightest security can't always dissuade the most determined poachers. The pungent aroma of sweetmeats emanates from the neighborhood around the Three Dog Bakery. But instead of attracting people, it's becoming a big draw for dogs of all shapes and sizes and their doting owners. The shop is the first overseas outlet of the American Three Dog Bakery chain and the only shop in Tokyo that makes freshly baked cookies, pies and cakes, especially for dogs. Inside the shop, the staff are busy putting the final touches on the canine treats, which the shop's owners claim contain nothing but the finest wholesome ingredients. Refrigerated glass cases are filled with row upon row of carbo chip cookies, dog brownies and the aptly named pup cakes, which have been coloured using vegetable extracts. It all seems to be a lot of work for products which after all are just going to the dogs. However, the American owners of Three Dog Bakery think that the new concept will be a big hit with the pets as well as their owners. At 150 yen to 200 yen a piece, the cakes and cookies aren't cheap and cost as much as the delicacies the city's bakeries sell to their human clientele. In addition, the canines can sample some of the goodies before their owners buy. It's a formula which has been proved successful in the United States. The shop, which opened in July, has been a big hit among the local residents of the upmarket neighborhood where it's located. But there are those who are skeptical. They wonder if the dogs really do appreciate the canine treats. Actually, I think they're just using the place to meet other dogs. Still in Japan, and if you've ever wondered what's on the mind of your precious pet dog, wonder no longer. One Japanese toy manufacturer has come up with what it is called the Baolingual, or the world's first computerized translator of the canine language. It doesn't really interpret words or phrases. As far as we know, dogs are no grammaticians and have no language per se. But this new toy from the land of the gadgets senses the dog's emotions through a voice print or the timbre of its bark and whines. Through a microphone attached to the dog's collar, the pet's emotional state is deciphered and that information is sent via infrared beam to the owner's canine emotion pager, translating the noises into different emoticons. So far, they've identified six different basic emotions in dogs, frustration, anger, relaxation, happiness, sadness, and a feeling of accomplishment. While the technology was developed by Japan Acoustic Laboratories and built by Index Corp, it will be marketed by Japan's top toy maker, Takara. Turkey's Izmir Zoo has welcomed two new bouncing baby tigers to their growing family of big cats. The cubs were born at the southeastern city of Gaziantep and had been handed into the zoo after their owner decided he could no longer give them the care they required. It's hoped the zoo's other female tigers will eventually take care of the cubs, although it's far too early to introduce them. The baby tigers are having to adapt to their new environment without their mother around to reassure them. They're so timid at the moment that even the zoo staff are keeping their distance to ensure they stay as calm as possible. According to the zoo, though, the situation should improve quickly as they become more familiar with their strange new surroundings. And more good news, China's dwindling population of Siberian tigers is enjoying a mini baby boom thanks to artificial insemination techniques. A recent study found that only 9 to 13 Siberian tigers were left in the wild in China, but those living in captivity are faring far better. In the past 12 months, over 30 Siberian tiger cubs have been born in captivity thanks to artificial insemination.
Colombia, known for its social and political unrest, is also well known for humpback whales. For part of the year, the Colombian Pacific coast becomes one of the world's largest breeding grounds for the mammal, an event that, despite the country's conflicts, attracts thousands of tourists each year. Up to 20,000 tourists visit Malaga from August until mid-October when humpback whales are present. Colombia's Bahia Solano is one of the principal breeding sites for the whale, which can reach up to 18 meters in length and can weigh as much as 65 tons. Humpback whales are very acrobatic and known for their energetic breaching. Breaching may be done purely for play or may be used to loosen skin parasites or have some social meaning or to communicate with other whales. An estimated 12 to 1,500 humpback whales visit the coast of northwestern Ecuador, Colombia and southern Panama each year to reproduce. This represents 12 to 15 percent of all southern hemisphere humpbacks and is the only southern population that breeds north of the equator. Such a peaceful scene in such a troubled country. The magnificent hippo enclosure at the Berlin Zoo combines true-to-life natural habitats with the most modern of architectural designs and techniques. But that's not to say that the zoo's newest arrival likes his home in the slightest. Born two and a half weeks ago, Berlin Zoo's baby hippo hates being in the water. Zookeepers virtually had to force him to take his first bath recently in front of many bemused visitors. The word hippopotamus means river horse, and while everyone knows that they're plant-eating, water-loving mammals, no one seems to have told Junior. He can't even swim yet and still isn't very pleased about the daily trips to the pool, but he has to get used to the water. When things get too exhausting, the baby hippo uses his mum's back to rest on and is totally dependent on her at the moment. While adult hippos can stay submerged for up to six minutes, the young can only manage about half a minute, although they're still able to suckle underwater just as they do on the land. A young hippo begins to eat grass at three weeks, but its mother continues to suckle it for about a year, assuming it doesn't drown first. Hippos are well adapted to their aquatic life, with small ears, eyes and nostrils set at the top of their heads. These senses are so keen that even submerged in water, the hippo is alert to its surroundings. Baby hippo prefers to just stand on the spot with his ears, eyes and nostrils shut tight. In order to breathe, the little chap has to catapult himself off the bottom to the surface of the water. According to keeper Ragnar Kuna, it's quite a challenge for the youngster, as the pool is almost two meters deep in many places. But with mum's help, he should get the hang of it soon. For centuries, bull elephants have transported tourists to the hilltop Amber Fort in India's northwestern state of Rajasthan. But now they look set to lose their jobs. The state tourism department wants a complete ban on male elephants carrying tourists, because at certain times of the year, they can become quite dangerous. The tourism department has been contemplating the ban since a bull elephant ran amok while carrying two foreign tourists to the Amber Fort and wants elephant owners to get rid of all 11 elephants by year's end.
Although the tourists weren't hurt in that incident, the elephant died from his injuries. Elephant owners say it was an isolated case and the government shouldn't take such a harsh step. Dr. Panika, a leading elephant veterinarian from the southern state of Kerala, says it's the bulls who cause most of the commotion when they're in rut, a period of time when they can become unusually aggravated by things that normally don't bother them in the slightest. Panika, along with another veterinarian and two wildlife trust experts, are in Jaipur to train more than 30 local veterinarians and mahouts on the basics of elephant health and management. The veterinary doctors said all wasn't well with the elephants employed at the fort. Most of them suffered from a variety of ailments like foot rot, lameness, toenail crack and a host of other diseases, including malnutrition. And finally, Asia's first elephant corridor in India's southern Karnataka state plans to preserve the fast dwindling elephant population in the country. Under the Project Elephant Scheme, the government recently acquired Kanyanapura Corridor to link the western and eastern Ghats. State forest officials say the Nigeria Biosphere Reserve has about 9,000 elephants, the highest concentration in the world. The deputy director of Bandipur National Park said deforestation and encroachment of habitat due to human settlements have led to a man-animal conflict, ultimately resulting in destruction of these intelligent species. Due to loss of corridors and habitat, the elephants in India are now scattered in more than 15 states and their estimated population stands anywhere between 15,000 and 20,000. The idea behind the corridor is to establish ecological restoration of existing natural habitats and migratory routes of elephants. Professor Raman Sukumar, head of the Centre for Ecological Studies, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, who identified this corridor, said this would be very crucial for elephant survival as most of the routes and habitats had been destroyed. The corridor had gone down to something like 50 metres a few years ago and now through acquisition of land north of the corridor they've been able to extend it to half a kilometre. This is the first successful example of setting up a corridor in the country. <laughs>